So far, we have discussed the differential amplifier and how does it amplify the differential signal and how does the differential amplifier respond to the common mode input voltage. However, the differential amplifier that we have presented so far is unpractical. And the reason is the load resistors RD are so large and they cannot be used inside the IC chip. Basically, they are unpractical. So what we have to do is we have to develop another technique to implement the differential amplifier inside the IC chip. Because this particular topic is about CMOS technology, so one of the ways to implement the differential amplifier is to use a differential amplifier with mass loads, which means that the load resistors are replaced with transistors. So basically we use transistors that would act as resistors instead of RD. The reason is RD consumes large area of the chip. There are different types of active loads. Two are commonly used in practice. The first one is what we call diode connected loads. So basically if you have a PMOS transistor as the one shown here we connect the gate to the drain and this particular transistor behaves as a diode. We have discussed this particular connection early on in previous lectures. And the second type of loads is what we call biased load. So basically the PMOS transistor shown here is biased at a particular voltage. And when you bias it at a particular voltage this transistor behaves as a load resistance across the drain source. And we will show you examples how we go on to implement the differential amplifiers using both loads. And the first one we're going to use is the differential amplifier using diode connected loads. So basically if you will start with the transistors M1 and M2, these two transistors act as amplifiers and they have the differential input going in and then over here we have the current source to bias both transistors. And now the two resistors RD1 and RD2 are replaced with transistors M3 and M4 as shown here. And these two transistors are connected as diodes. Simply the gates of M3 and M4 are connected to the drains of M3 and M4. We also discussed the diode connected circuits before and we know that the output resistance seen across the diode is basically 1 over GM in parallel with the AC output resistance. And keep in mind that the diode connected transistor is always in the saturation region, right? Because the drain is always connected to the gate. Then we can say the differential gain is given as AV, which is the differential gain, will equal to V out over V in, whereas V out is the differential output voltage and V in is the differential input voltage. This will equal to GMN times 1 over GMP in parallel with RON in parallel with ROP because 1 over GM is much much smaller than the small signal output resistances RON and ROP. This term over here is basically can be simplified into 1 over GM. Then the differential gain AV is approximately equal to GMN over GMB. Now if we substitute for the values of GMN and GMB we get the gain that is approximately will equal to mu N times W over LN over mu P times W over LP. And this is beautiful because all what you have to do now is adjust the W over L ratio of the bottom transistor and the W over L ratio of the top transistors to get the accurate gain. Keep in mind that the transistors are matched which means that M1 is identical to M2 and M3 is identical to M4. These transistors are matched then by adjusting the W over L ratio of the bottom transistor and the top transistor 
you can adjust the gain. And that is why the CMOS technology is very useful because now all what we have to do is just control the geometric structure of the transistors and we will be able to control the gain. This particular circuit consumes large overhead voltage which reduces the maximum voltage swing at the output, right? Because we cannot control the bias and voltage that easily and maintain the gain that we want because the bias and voltage is a function of W over L ratio and the gain is also a function of W over L ratio. So we cannot get a very good gain and a very good output voltage swing. It requires us to use a very large overhead voltage. So what we do instead of using the diode connected transistors which are used in practice but not as much as the other technique which is basically differential amplifier using biased active load. So what we have to do is we use transistors as active loads and we bias them at a particular voltage. So this circuit is very important. Let's look at the circuit. You have basically M1 and M2 that will act as amplifiers and they are biased using a current source as shown in the circuit and we have also the differential input voltage but the load resistors are replaced with two transistors M3 and M4 and they are biased at some voltage and when we bias these transistors they are biased to be in the saturation region and all the transistors are matched basically M1 is identical to M2 and M3 is identical to M4 so these transistors must be matched when we do the design. Then what we can do now we say if M3 and M4 are in the saturation region then they are replaced by their AC output resistors RO3 and RO4. Basically the AC equivalent circuit of M3 and M4 will be RO3 and RO4 and we explained that early on in previous lectures then the differential gain is given as AV will equal to V out over V in the differential output voltage over the differential input voltage and that will equal to GMN times the equivalent output resistance which is RON in parallel with ROP. GMN is the transconductance of the bottom transistor. The bottom transistor is the amplifier even though these gain equations are simple and when it comes to the design there is a lot of trade-offs so for example you have to properly select the bias and current but the bias and current will determine GM and RO now not just that you also have restrictions on what's the output voltage has to be and what's the common mode input voltage has to be so now here is your restriction I want it to have a desired gain which means that they have to have GM and ROs as desired but GM and RO depend on the bias currents so I have to design the bias currents of the transistors at the same time I have restriction on the DC voltage at the output and the common mode input voltages which are the DC input voltages for both transistors M1 and M2 and also maximizing the output voltage swing at the outputs V out 1 and V out 2 these are all design trade-offs that are interrelated and when you start to do the design problems at the end of this lecture as part of your piece by assignment you will start to realize that the complexity of the design is more involved although the equations look very simple part of the excitement of the analog designer is really you have trade-offs and then you have to make your own judgment to decide how would you meet the trade-offs and how would you push the technology and you look for different techniques and clever techniques to design your circuit. Another condition that we have to deal with is the low power consumption. What's the power consumed by the circuit and you have to minimize it. Basically the power for this particular circuit is the DC current which is ISS times the supply voltage which is VDD. So the power consumed is VDD times ISS. Usually the voltage supply is defined by the technology so we cannot go below a particular voltage and then all what we have to deal with is reducing the current and by reducing the current you have to deal with the variation 
within the process of manufacturing the transistors such that the error in the design is not as large to affect the behavior of your circuit. So these are trade-offs that are practical. You have to use complex computer simulations such as edge spice and very accurate modeling uh, to uh, come up with accurate results. 